This is the Ferg Life Podcast, Episode 1. Join us as we embark on a psychedelic garden tour with a bad waitress. We get thrown from a bar with a Dartmouth bard and hear a backstage jazz fest confessional. Ferment the nonviolent revolution and armed epiphany. And we ring out a smoke machine alarm bell through blooms in ears. This is Ferg Life. Working as a bartender, coming home every night at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, you often run into some pretty weird shit, and last night was one of those nights. I'm biking down the Woodstock Road, and I notice a fire down by the river, off in the distance, next to the Lieutenant Governor's Mansion. I'm thinking to myself, hey, check it out, there's some people down there having a little Saturday night shindig, roasting some marshmallows, keeping their butts warm on this cool, crisp autumn evening. But as I get a bit closer, I notice this is not a shindig style fire. This is more of a hobo meth tent inferno apocalypse style fire. There are multiple tents on fire. It's catching the trees around it all on fire. So I stop and I'm like, we got a situation on our hands here. I immediately rush down to the scene of the fire, down to the river. And when I get down there, there is no one around. It is eerie quiet. It's just me. I'm like 10 feet away from this inferno. The heat is beating off my face. And I'm just kind of stunned thinking about how weird this whole thing is. The juxtaposition of the mighty St. John River in this blazing inferno. I'm just gapped out thinking about how fucked up everything is. All of a sudden, massive explosion. Bam! Scared the shit out of me. I don't know if it was one of those little camp propane cylinder things, those little green deals. Anyway, massive explosion really woke me up from my daydream. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, what are you doing? Call 911. The trees are catching on fire. So I call 911, get the po- get the police and the or the fire guys coming. So I go back up to the Woodstock Road and wait for them. And they show up. I point down to where the fire was. But the fireman gave me a look like, he gave me a look like, is this dude like a, hobo meth head who possibly lit his tent on fire possibly cooking meth in the tent and then he called us to like cover his tracks or something the fireman was definitely suspicious of me our first guests are a band from toronto ontario called bad waitress and as soon as I read this band's name, Bad Waitress, I immediately had an affinity with them just because I'm such a bad bartender myself. I was like, we got that in common. Then I looked them up online and their main singles for a song called Acid Brain. And the video is said it was shot after a massive two day acid bender. So I was like, I got to have these girls on the podcast. Like not, she's a great waitress, but she's a bad waitress. Yeah, you guys were like, oh, we have to change our name from Nude Dogs because like people don't know what what we're saying. We're but really tonight, everyone was like, uh, bad witches, <laughs> or someone was like, bad hairline. I was like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> bad yeah. So basically, it makes sense because we're all really shitty at sh- <laughs> at something. Nicole's an angel, but I'm an angel. Yeah, she's also shitty at being shitty. But she's <laughs> shitty though. She's my shitty babe. I'm a shitty babe. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember why I I wrote like the lyrics for Acid Brain. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, it was the first time I did acid. And I was like, I was tree planting in BC and I drove from BC to the Northwest Territories and in this like fucking 1986 Pontiac Bonneville and fucking had two tabs of acid that I bought in a junkyard from these two fucking hippies in a van. And I, I had, never, had never done acid before, so I fucking drove from BC to Northwest Territories and like picked up a puppy on the way, and then I got home and my fucking parents took off for a week. 
and I all I had to do was water our huge garden and like greenhouses, and I just took this acid and got naked and just fucking watered gardens <laughs> for like two days, and that's literally what the song is about. Amen. And I like so chased that motherfucker. Man. That fucking puppy ran through the fence into a prickle bush, and I was naked, and I had to run through the prickle bush and fucking get that fucking dog. Amen. <laughs> that's what acid brains. <laughs> When we when we well, we threw that house party for acid brain, and everyone was on acid, like well, forty okay. people maybe in the not house. Everyone, but like no, maybe like, like enough, <laughs> enough people, like everybody was fucked on 35%. acid, including okay. me. It was I like didn't after come. Like it took me a while. I'm not gonna lie. Anyway. All right. Anyway. Huh. Uh, well, we just recorded an LP in July, so that's gonna come out in 2020, springtime, hopefully. We have like a music video coming out as well, just like for a single. Nice. We're doing a, a tour, another tour at the end of October down to Fest in Florida and then back up. We're touring with Pale Lips. Pale Lips. Um, and then we'll do lots of other things after that. Next up is a conversation I had with Roxy Mercier of the Halifax soul band Roxy and the Underground Soul System. We spoke about a conversation she had backstage at the Halifax Jazz Festival. I was looking to go to the bathroom. It was the porta potties and stuff, and someone had clearly took a shit on the floor of the porn body or something. There's shit everywhere, I guess. So she came out, and I'm backstage, and she walked by, and I was like, oh my god, it's fucking Sharon Jones. And she's like, man, damn, someone in this, like, shit in the bathroom. And I was like, oh man, hi. I don't know why I said this. It just came to my mind, and I was like, I would just go pee in a bush or something. (laughs) And she was like, oh, I've done that before. And I was like, oh, what? So she's like, yeah, I got my cup. I was like, your cup? She's like, yeah, yeah, like, uh, you know, and again, you can't see this, but, like, she would do the same when she put a cup between her legs. She said, this is the exact thing she showed me. She's like, I put my cup between my legs like this, and then uh, I just pee. And there was this one day, the cup wasn't big enough. <sighs> and so, God bless herself, because she's an amazing woman. She is just like, I got pee on my hand! I got pee on my hand! <laughs> it's just this whole dance. And then, as this is happening, her drummer comes in and it was like, So, uh, Shan, how fast do you want this song? She starts dancing to the song, like, like this. You know, probably not like that, because I can't dance for shit. And so, after her set, this is the best part. She comes off stage, we're, we're talking again. And, uh, everyone knows she died of breast cancer. This is the best part that uh, I could ever say because, you know, when someone tells you you have breast cancer or cancer of any kind or anything like that, uh, she's on stage saying she fought the whole thing and she comes out and like, yeah, I got it again. And we all know she died of cancer. She told us this, us being me and my partner, uh that she had it and I had like talked to her deeply about like my mom having breast cancer and we went on this like huge talk about it and I just thought it was like crazy that she was telling us like trusting us and then she talked to us all night it was great and then she comes out of her trailer sorry I missed part she goes into her trailer comes out of her trailer and says uh, here's my pass and she signed it for me and I have it I hairsprayed it cause apparently if you hairspray it It'll stay, and I have it with my lanyard. It's in Sharon Jones. (laughs) 
Next up is Halifax rock star Adam Baldwin. He just played the bar with his band supporting his new album, No Rest for the Wicked. You can also catch him on tour supporting Matt Mays in the lead guitar position. He told me a story about getting thrown out of the now-defunct bar Nikki Z's here in Fredericton while uh, playing with Matt Mays at the now-defunct uh, music festival, Fred Rock. So uh, we felt like all was well. I, I, I do feel like it was uh, Matt Mays' band and Chaos and his band, and we were the only uh, patrons of, of the entire place that evening and we were kind of you know enjoying some karaoke that evening uh we were intoxicated uh and uh but that's par for the course at a bar i think at that hour uh our bass player brody uh peterson he got up to sing like a virgin and brody can't sing he's got a really deep voice and he and it was hilarious i decided i was going to go up with my friend and sing along and at nikki z's they had uh, wireless microphones, probably three of them on the stage. Brody had one. I went up and grabbed one, and I was singing like a virgin with my friend Brody. And this huge uh, bouncer uh, caught sight of this, and he, he just, uh, I suppose he didn't, he just didn't like the look of me up there, or maybe he didn't like my performance. And he came and put me in a big bear hug and literally threw me over his shoulder. He was huge. He was probably 6'6", 350 pounds. And he started walking me out of the place. And, uh, a lot of the people in there, they're like, no, man, it's cool. He's we, like, there are buds. And he wasn't listening. But I still had the microphone in my hand. So I was singing like a virgin the whole way out of the bar. I was out, like, in the parking lot with his microphone still singing. And uh, uh, he, 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 like, threw me on the, on the ground. I still had the microphone. I was singing for a minute. And then he went back in. And then he, he had to come back out and, and get the wireless mic from me for the uh, next performance. <laughs> That's uh, a it's a story we tell often. For it was a good laugh. Like to see me Next up, I speak with local artist Emma Johnson, stage name Arma Epiphania. She's a rapper, a piano virtuoso, a real jack of all trades. And I spoke to her about the Extinction Rebellion. You want to sign up for Extinction Rebellion? We just found out last night or whenever we held this video thing that you have a choice whether you like want to go to prison or not. But the whole thing is based on sociological evidence that civil disobedience is the only thing that causes drastic change in society and it's sociologically proven through like he gives several examples like the civil rights movement and like india's independence like Mark Gandhi and salt like march or whatever. yeah it all involves civil disobedience in countries so that it's more dangerous it usually involves death like people who are like willing to just walk up to british officers without like unarmed and just get like beaten to death so it's like in our country it's like the stakes are way lower but in our country what matters the most is reputation so people's reputations are at stake so like once we can convince people to not care about their reputations as much then they would be more willing to because basically yeah like the point is that we're in a mass delusion and it's like um no one actually believes that it's true or we think that we're gonna somehow like be able to cut back on all the carbon like in a really fast way because our technology is so impressive like I don't know what people think I'm just guessing but like we're in a mass illusion and they keep telling us like these are the targets but like he basically says in his video like the targets are complete bullshit like we're already going to reach two two degrees centigrade even if we cut all emissions right now okay, even I if we got rid of fossil fuels right now and like they're still telling us that we need like a 20 year 
you know, getting used to period. And it's really scary for here, yeah, because it's really cold and people need gas to heat their homes. Like, like, my mom is a sweetheart. Like, she fucking loves to knit and stuff. Like, you know, my parents would be, like, so, like, like just, like, thrown off, like, by the knowledge that, like, even if I went to jail for, like, three days, they'd be, like... Because, like, there was talk, you know what I mean? Like, if you're going to be a school teacher, like, at a public school system, like, you need a criminal background check, and it just depends, like, you know, who the people hiring... Are. Like, most people just won't, like, out of principle. So it's it's really, like, a cognitive dissonance. It's, like, a choice you have, like that you have to make, like, looking at things. Like, if you do really believe that we're going to the apocalypse that stuff would stop mattering as much, like your reputation and stuff, but it's, it's like, it's hard for anyone to actually think of that world because we're so used to, like, the world existing. We're so used to society existing the way that it does and that, like, going to prison is a bad thing. And, like, if you really, if you believe the science and, like, and if you really, like, are scared for the future and more so the, the future of your children, I think, like, people's children, like, that's when, like, things, like, I don't even know how society's going to look at that point, like... Yeah, it's definitely something to consider. That kind of protest. And you dig it like a spigot. My guess is yes, you can. Like, can I kick it wicked? Like a shot, if you happy and you know it. As you flap your hands to the thick sun of a cold flowing. Broke up and I'm in, cold climbing. Dope or rhyming, more worth it than the whole diamond. Acquired off the black market, a wire tapping. Couldn't target a jar or spit that rapid fire spark lit. A rapper, bug zapper, and it don't or dapper, voyagers to maximum exposure, the beast got family and numbers asking them for closure, oh, send them a gun and tell them clean it, then go get the nun who said her son didn't mean it, she wore a filled in thong, a billabong, and said not for real as a villain on a book of song. To close out the podcast, I speak to my good friend Dan Tweedy, the brains behind the Bloom Phenomenon. I asked him about a show earlier this fall where his band Smoke Machine set off our fire alarm. We brought a smoke machine to fog up the night to make it look good. And when we tried it during sound check, it started smoking. And we were like We can't use this because it's like lighting itself on fire. And we thought this was a mistake. So Adam was really wanting to have a fog machine. So I said, Adam, if you want a fog machine, can you go to Long McQuaid and rent it out? And he rented a a fog machine from Long McQuaid. Just like their, far, like their basic level. And when he blasted it, right before we were about to start on, it filled the entire venue full of smoke. And then the next thing I knew, I heard a fire alarm going off in my in-ear monitors. I heard it. In my in-ear monitors, I heard it. And I was like, okay. What the fuck is going on? So I like played half a song. I ripped the earphones out. And I looked over at Adam. And he's pumping more smoke out. Because he's just like... He's like hard on the fucking like... You know, let's fog this place out train. We all realized it was over. And we had to evacuate the whole place. And I was scared shitless. I was like, this is actually going to ruin everything. And I was maybe a little bit mean to Adam. And I regret that. I do regret being mean to Adam. <laughs> but he got really upset with me. And he was like... He was like really like not into me being upset about the fact that this happened. And I take a certain amount of blame for that. But he was like, I'm going away. And I'm not going to play this show. (laughs) And I mean, I like I own my part in this, you know, I'm not blaming him, but this is actually what happened. Brittany, being just a total sweetheart, corralled Adam and talked him down from being so furious at me. And 
by the time I met them downstairs in the basement, Adam was like, okay, I will play this show. And so we played the show. And everybody came back in after being evacuated. And we still played to, like, a great crowd. And it was super fun. But it was, like, the... It was the most stressed to happiness that I've ever been in my life. 